Max Sterling. Welcome to LARP Mix. Today's video I wanted to do because it's something that affects me and it's something that I thought, well, hey Max, if you don't know, then maybe some other people aren't aware either. So this video today is about poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac, which depending on where you're at, may or may not be a factor. So I know not everyone lives in the same area of the world that I do, and in your areas you may not even have this stuff. You may have something completely different, but for a lot of us, especially in the U.S. here, uh, poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac can be a serious concern. And I'll admit that even though once upon a time I was a scout, I honestly, just over the years, sort of being in cities, not thinking about it, have seriously forgotten what all of them look like. Now, if I'm in the woods and I'm sort of scanning, I could probably take a guess, but honestly, I do not remember. So I'm thinking to myself, if you knew this and learned it and then forgotten, maybe there's people that don't even know or have even considered that the stuff is out there. And then maybe there's also folks out there that have just forgotten it over the years. So let's go ahead and talk about these three things. And the reason we're gonna pick these three is because they're pretty abundant, uh, at least in the area I'm in. I have all three of them. And if you get into a patch of it and you get it all over yourself, you're gonna be in big trouble. So poison ivy, I think, is the one that affects most people. So let's start with poison ivy. Now poison ivy can cause a reaction to most people pretty quick and with just sort of minorly uh, disturbing or contacting it. And there's an old saying, leaves of three let them be and that covers really a lot of stuff so it's a good sort of thing to remember if mnemonic devices work for you leaves of three let them be but poison ivy specifically what you'll run into is it's three leaves at the end of a stem and it's usually one big leaf with two uh, smaller leaves that sort of uh, shoot out beside it and uh, they have uh, usually a jagged edge or smooth edge and they do change color uh, depending on the season. So they can be green, um, they can be yellow or orange, it, reddish maybe even, depending on the time of year. And sometimes they also have like a sort of greenish white berry on it. And sometimes they even have like little green and yellow flowers on them. So it really depends on the season. And this is why this stuff is so confusing to me is just that, you know, they look different depending on the time of year. And if you're LARPing all year round, this stuff sort of changes a little bit. but. Those are the take-homes for poison ivy. So three leaves on the end of a stem, just don't roll around in it, don't hide uh, boxes in it. If you're playing the monsters or staff or NPC, you know, don't lead people on a hike through giant piles of it. And uh, poison ivy, of course, it can grow in like a vine form uh, and just, you know, sort of low-lying uh, coverage as well. So just be aware of that. Now poison oak can also come in a cluster of three leaves, but sometimes five or seven, and the leaves look like oak tree leaves, go figure. Uh, so they're a little bit wavy in appearance, and like I said, similar to oak tree leaves, if you know what those look like. But the tips are rounded instead of pointed like poison ivy is, and uh, these once again change color with the seasons. It can be green, it can be uh, like brown, it can be yellowish, uh, sometimes even like pink uh, so poison oak does change color and it's usually grows in like a big sort of shrub and uh, sometimes it can also be like a vine climbing up the side of a tree or a building so just keep that in mind so our leaves of three let them be saying can apply to this as well and of course poison sumac this is one that I've certainly seen but I've never really gotten into it and had it affect me but they have uh, usually seven to 13 leaves uh, in pairs, and then there's like a single leaf at the end of a branch. They're like oval and they're smooth edge. And uh, they change colors, it be orange, it can be green, they can be a reddish color. And this can grow into a, uh, almost like a full size tree. Uh, it can also be sort of in a uh, shrub type size but these grow very large in comparison to poison ivy and uh, poison oak so just be mindful of that now if you do come in contact with any of these plants the best thing you can do is go wash with soapy water as quick as possible you have a few minutes before that oil sort of sets in if you get all over your costume you may want to change out of that piece of costume if you can 
If not, you know, just leave it on there, but try to remember not to touch it. I know if you have big cloaks on and stuff, you can walk through this stuff, not get it on you, but have it all over your cloak and then later, you know, transfer it onto yourself. So just be mindful, wash your hands. Uh, you know, a lot of us do build up resistance over the years, but it doesn't mean that everybody is uh, poison ivy proof. So you shouldn't just go rolling around in piles of it. And like I said, I went adventuring uh, just this last weekend and saw tons of all three of them at the camp I was at. I also saw goldenrod, which is something else you should avoid because uh, that'll give you, uh, you know, allergic reactions as well. And uh, you so certainly don't want to stop the smell. And goldenrod is just a like a yellow sort of uh, flowery stuff. I'll show a picture of that. But um. There's a lot of stuff out there that you want to avoid. If you found this video interesting, you may want to do some more research on your own. If you have your own tips or hints, leave them down in the comments below. If there's something in your geographic area that is not you know, poison ivy, poison oak, or poison sumac, but something else plant-based that you should avoid, put it down below. I mean, I, I know obviously, you know, depending on where you're at, there's a lot bigger concerns than poison ivy because you have rattlesnakes, scorpions, and all kinds of crazy stuff uh, like that. But as far as plants are concerned, just walking through this stuff, you know, can really cause you some problems. And obviously it goes without saying, unless you can identify a plant in the forest, you should not be eating anything. Um, especially when it comes to things like uh, mushrooms, toadstools, and stuff like that. So really, unless you really know what you're doing, avoid anything edible, but certainly avoid touching a lot of things. It's good for nature because you're not disturbing it. And also it's good for you because then you're not going to be itchy for the next two weeks in between events. So. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found the information useful. And now the next time you're out LARPing, if you had never considered before, you forgot what it looked like, now you can keep your eyes peeled so that you're not hiding uh, in a shrub full of poison oak. And of course, until next time, adventure on. Never again, never again. <laughs>